Hello, in this AVIA how-to guide, I'm going to show you how to set up the basic communication parameters for your AVIA unit, and then show you how to configure the rules to send messages. Okay, so let's find the AVIA suite folder on our PC, and then just double click the exe file to run the application. And in a few seconds, AVIA suite should open on your desktop. Okay, let's click the USB icon, we should be connected by the programming cable to our AVR unit and choose the COM port and click on tick and we'll connect to the unit. Okay, let's set up the configuration. This is where we set the parameters for the communication networks. But first of all, let's give the device a name. Now this can be anything. So it can be your site name or it could be the machine you've attached the AVR to. Or well, in our case, it's going to be our demo unit. So we're just going to name this Avior Demo. And once we've made a change, we're going to click on the tick icon in the second row of icons, which makes the change and writes it to the attached unit. OK, let's set up the Wi-Fi. So this is the Wi-Fi settings to allow the device to communicate. So here we'll enter the SSID, so the Wi-Fi name, in the location you're installing the AVR unit and the Wi-Fi password for that network. And again, click tick to accept the change and write it to the attached unit. Okay, it will ask to reboot the unit. We'll have to do that afterwards to accept the new Wi-Fi parameters, but for now, we'll just skip that step. Okay, PLMN, that's our mobile network. So in here we want to put in the number of the SIM card you've inserted into the base of your AVR unit. We'll also set the access point name for the network you're using. And this will vary from network to network and you should be able to find this just by searching for the APN of your mobile network on the internet. Enter the APN address details, it's usually a .co.uk or .com or might just be the word internet the username for that APN and the password for that APN if they have those. And again, click tick once you've done that and that will save it into the unit. The SIM card I have is a GIFGAF SIM card so I'm going to put the GIFGAF APN details into my demo unit. And again tick and it will write that to the device. Okay, that's the basic housekeeping done. Okay, now we're going to move on to the rules section. This is where we set triggers, conditions and actions such as sending text messages, emails, etc. As you can see, for each of these rules, we can define a trigger, an, a condition and an action. First of all, let's give it a name. In this example, we'll call it low water alert. And we'll be using a float switch as an input to measure the water level. And that's a digital input, so we'll define the trigger as a digital input and digital input 1 as shown in the wiring diagram to the right. OK, let's set a condition. So we want this digital input to come on. We want to monitor the input status. So we choose that from the drop-down list. We want it to come on, so we want it to equal the logical state 1. Well, we actually could put on in there if we wanted to. OK, so that's our condition met. Now let's select an action from the drop-down list and this action we want to send a text message and so we choose from drop-down list send SMS and it populates the action field with send SMS if we hover over it we can see the syntax we need to use so we need to first of all set up the mobile number we want to send the text message to and then in quotation marks we type in the string we want to send by text to that number OK, but as you can see here, we can perform multiple actions for each rule and we can have multiple conditions as well. So in this case, let's turn the pump on at the same time when the water level is low to refill it. So we'll turn on output 1, which is connected to the pump and you can see the wiring diagram on the right again. OK, let's do a third action. So we might want to keep a log of this. So let's send an email and we can again 
from the drop down box just choose the send email and send the email back to the base so we know what's going on at the remote location. Okay, and as you can see from the left hand side there you can create multiple rules. Every time you make a change we click on the tick icon to write it to the unit. So let's add a, another condition. So in this case um, we'll make sure digital input 2 is on at the same time. So again we'll choose drop down list, find digital input 2, find the input state again and equal that to 1. So now in this example we're looking for both inputs to be on before we carry out the actions below. So as you can see this can be quite a versatile product. This is the first of a number of videos we'll be making to show you how to configure the unit. Please check back for more videos and if you want some more information please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you for watching.